Hello and welcome back to Southern California. More specifically, to the hub. Throughout this enormous trading center is a number of small details that we can discover. And now that I have, I present to you 5 secrets you may have missed in Fallout 1's hub. Starting us off, we have several cultural references. The first is a reference to the TV show South Park. At the center of the town is the police station, where Deputy Kenny is standing guard. For those of you who've seen the show and recognized the name, you can probably guess where this is going. If the Vault Dweller witnesses Deputy Kenny getting killed, then they will shout out, They killed Kenny, those bastards. If you haven't seen the show, Kenny is one of the main characters universally known for dying on a very frequent basis, and his friends Eric, Stan, and Kyle will use the catchphrase for each and every death, which is a lot. Oh my god! They killed Kenny! You bastard! Another reference is a quote from the 1970s movie Soylent Green. If the Vault Dweller knows about Iguana Bob's little meat scheme, then the option to blackmail him for a piece of the action becomes available. To get him to do so, the player will scream out, Prime Choice Select is made of people. It's made of people. This is a strikingly similar line said by Charlton Heston, the protagonist of Soylent Green, after he discovers the product is made from the deceased. Listen to me, Hatcher. You gotta tell him! Silent Green is people! A very short reference found at the hub is the name of Decker's Casino, the Maltese Falcon. This is the same name as the 1930s detective novel by Dashiell Hammett. The novel involves corruption and deceit, similar themes found within the casino's walls. The final reference I found was Robin Hood. By heading into Old Town, the player can find the Thieves' Guild beneath an old abandoned building. After passing through a number of traps, Loxley, the leader of the Thieves, will approach the player. His accent is a stereotypical British accent, but the best thing about him is that if you get on his nerves, his accent will slip. Just talk to Jasmine in the room outside this chamber. She'll give you details, a map, and a few little goodies to help you on your way. But remember, if you even think about ratting us out to the cops, we'll be a memory before they arrive. But enough gloom, cheerio, good luck, and ta-ta. His fake accent, clothing, and name are all references pointing towards the Prince of Thieves. Scott Benny, a Fallout designer, said during an interview that Loxley was his least favorite thing he worked on during the development of Fallout, saying he was too cutesy and one of the least memorable NPCs in Fallout 1 and 2. Bloody impressive making it through the defenses like that, hmm? What's your name, love? Fake it till you make it, Loxley. Next, we have a weird encounter in the hub's downtown merchant block, specifically in the hub's library. If the Vault Dweller has the low number of two intelligence and charisma, then Miss Stapleton, the hub's librarian, will offer up an English language holodisc. But there's a catch. You have to find it. Let me know if you found it, or if you threatened her instead. Of course, if you do the latter, she will outrightly refuse to help you, and she can be pretty useful for a quest later on. So it might be worth playing nice, at least until you've gotten what you want. Have you ever been playing a game and thought, I wish I could get my character laid? Of course you have. Who hasn't? Between killing mutants, dodging radiation, and earning caps, there's only two individuals who can offer a small piece of comfort between travels. In Junktown, Cynthia will offer her services, provided you saved her from the crazed raider. The other is Kerry Lee, the daughter slash assistant of Dimitri Romara, the owner of the Crimson Caravan. Upon speaking to him about protecting the caravans during their travels, he will send you to his daughter in the other room for more information. Now, if you're male and have a charisma of at least seven, or you have the Berserker title, Kerry Lee will begin flirting, and we all know where that leads. God, this feels good. The funny thing about this encounter is that Kerry Lee will actually reward the Vault Dweller for his performance, 
with Buff Out, Mentats, and Psycho, that, ladies and gentlemen, is what is known as a win-win situation. Dogmeat is universally recognized as the good boy who follows the protagonist throughout the series, in one form or another. But this wasn't always the case. Originally, Dogmeat was going to be the name of Jake's Dog, the arms dealer in Old Town. Jake's Dog began with the name Dog Shit. It was then changed to Dog Meat, and then changed once more after the developers decided that Jake wasn't going to have a dog. Dog Meat instead was sent to Junk Town to become the companion to the Vault Dweller. Imagine how differently things would have been if Dog Meat had remained as Jake's dog. Would we still have Dog Meat from the Scrapyard, or Dog Meat from the Red Rocket? How would you feel travelling the wastes without your canine companion? I don't know about you, but this four-legged fiend holds a special place in my heart. I'm sure most of you know who I'm talking about when I say the name Ron Perlman. If you don't, he's the narrator for Fallout 1, 2, Tactics, 3, New Vegas, 4, and 76. Out of all of those entries, his role has always been narrator, with the exception of Fallout 4 as the newscaster during the prologue. But did you know that he's only ever appeared as an NPC a single time? And that NPC can be found right here in the hub. It's Butch Harris. And there we have it. Five secrets you may have missed in Fallout 1's hub. Be sure to show your support by liking the video if you learned something new, and subscribing if you haven't already for more Fallout content. If there's anything you would like to see in a later video, leave a comment and I'll see what I can do. With that said, thank you as always for watching, and I'll see you in the next adventure.